Part One of the Bacchae. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Bacchae by Euripides. Translated by Gilbert Murray. Dramatis Personae. Dionysus the God, son of Zeus and of the Theban princess Semele. Read by M. B. Cadmus, formerly king of Thebes, father of Semele. Read by Bruce Perry. Pentheus. Read by Algy Pug. Agave. Read by Roseanne Schmidt. Tiresias. An aged Theban prophet. Read by Matthew Rees. A soldier of the Pentheus guard. Read by John Fricker. A messenger. Read by Dale Burgess. A chorus of inspired damsels, following Dionysus from the east, read by Elizabeth Clett, narrated by Elizabeth Clett, Part One. The background represents the front of the castle of Pentheus, king of Thebes. At one side is visible the sacred tomb of Semele, a little enclosure overgrown with wild vines, with a cleft in the rocky floor of it, from which there issues at times steam or smoke. The god Dionysus is discovered alone. Behold, God's son is come unto this land, of heaven's hot splendor lit to life, whom she of Thebes, even I, Dionysus, whom the brand who bore me, Cadmus' daughter Semele, died here. So, changed in shape from god to man, I walk again by Dirce's streams, and scan Ismenus' shore. There by the castle side I see her place, the tomb of the lightning's bride, the wreck of smouldering chambers and the great faint wreaths of fire undying, as the hate dies not that Hera held for Semele. I, Cadmus hath done well. In purity he keeps this place apart, inviolate, his daughter's sanctuary and I have set my green and clustered vines to robe it round. Far now behind me lies the golden ground of Lydian and of Phrygian, far away the wide hot plains where Persian sunbeams play, the Bactrian war holds and the storm-oppressed climb of the Mede, and Araby the blessed, and Asia all, that by the salt sea lies in proud embattled cities, motley wise of Helene and barbarian interwrought. And now I come to Hellas, having taught all the world else my dances and my right of mysteries, to show me in men's sight manifest God. And first of Helene lands, I cry this Thebes to waken, set her hands to clasp my wand, mine ivied javelin, and round her shoulders hang my wild fawn-skin. For they have scorned me whom at least beseemed, Semele's sisters, mocked my birth, nor deemed that Dionysus sprang from Diane's seed. My mother sinned, said they, and in her need, with Cadmus plotting, cloaked her human shame with the dread name of Zeus. For that the flame from heaven consumed her, seeing she lied to God. This must they vaunt, and therefore hath my rod on them first fallen, and stung them forth wild-eyed from empty chambers. The bare mountainside is made their home, and all their hearts are flame. Yea, I have bound upon the necks of them the harness of my rights, and with them all the seed of womankind from hut and hole of Thebes hath this my magic goaded out. And there with the old king's daughters in a rout confused, they make their dwelling place between the roofless rocks and shadowy pine trees green. Thus shall this Thebes, how sore soe'er it smart, learn and forget not, till she crave her part in mine adoring. Thus must I speak clear to save my mother's fame, and crown me here as true God, born by Semele to Zeus. 
now cadmus yieldeth up his throne and use of royal honour to his daughter's son pentheus who on my body hath begun a war with god he thrusteth me away from due drink-offering and when men pray my name entreats not therefore on his own head and his people's shall my power be shown then to another land when all things here are well must i fare onward making clear my godhead's might but should this theban town essay with wrath and battle to drag down my maids lo in their path myself shall be and maniac armies battled after me for this i veil my godhead with the wan form of the things that die and walk as man o oh, brood of timulus o'er the wide world flown o oh, lydian band my chosen and mine own damsels uplifted o'er the orient deep to wander where i wander and to sleep where i sleep up and wake the old sweet sound the clang that i and mystic rhea found the timbrel of the mountain gather all thebes to your song round pentheus royal hall i seek my new-made worshippers to guide their dances up cytheran's pine-clad side as he departs there comes stealing in from the left a band of fifteen eastern women the light of the sunrise streaming upon their long white robes and ivy-bound hair they wear fawn skins over the robes and carry some of them timbrels some pipes and other instruments many bear the thyrsus or sacred wand made of reed ringed with ivy they enter stealthily till they see that the place is empty, and then begin their mystic song of worship. From Asia, from the day-spring that uprises to Bromios, ever glorying we came. We laboured for our Lord in many guises. We toiled, but the toil is as the prize is. Thou mystery, we hail thee by name. Who lingers in the road, who espies us? We shall hide him in his house, nor be bold. Let the heart keep silence that defies us. For I sing this day to Dionysus the song that is appointed from of old. O oh, blessed he in all wise, who hath drunk the living fountain, whose life no folly staineth, and his soul is near to God, whose sins are lifted Paul-wise as he worships on the mountain, and where Cybele ordaineth, our mother he has trod his head with ivy laden, and his thyrsus tossing high, for our god he lifts his cry, Up, O Bacchae, wife and maiden, come, O ye Bacchae, come, O bring the joy bestower, god seed of god the sower, bring Bromios in his power from Phrygia's mountain dome, to street and town and tower, O bring ye Bromios home whom erst in anguish lying for an unborn life's desire, as a dead thing in the thunder his mother cast to earth, for her heart was dying, dying, in the white heart of the fire, till Zeus, the lord of wonder, devised new lairs of birth. Yea, his own flesh tore to hide him, and with clasps of bitter gold did a secret sun enfold, and the queen knew not beside him till the perfect hour was there then a horned god was found and a god of serpents crowned and for that our serpents wound in the wands his maidens bear and the songs of serpents sound in the mazes of their hair all hail o thebes thou nurse of semele with semele's wild ivy crown thy towers o burst in bloom of reading briny berries and leaves and flowers Uplift the dark divine wand, the oak wand and the pine wand, and don thy fawn skin, fringed in purity with fleecy white like ours. O oh, cleanse thee in the wand's waving pride, yea, all men shall dance with us and pray, when Bromios his company shall guide hillward, ever hillward where they stay, the flock of the believing, the maids from loom and weaving by the magic of his breath borne away. Hail thou! O nurse of Zeus, O caverned haunt where fierce arms clanged to guard God's cradle rare, for thee of old crested Corbant first woke in Cretan air, 
The wild orb of our orgies, the timbrel, and thy gorges rang with this strain, and blended Phrygian chant and sweet keen pipes were there. But the timbrel, the timbrel was another's, and away to Mother Rhea it must wend, and to our holy singing from the mothers the mad satyrs carried it, to blend in the dancing and the cheer of our third and perfect year, and it serves Dionysus in the end. O oh, glad! Glad on the mountains to swoon in the race outworn, where the holy fawn skin clings and all else sweeps away, to the joy of the red quick fountains, the blood of the hill goat torn, the glory of wild beast ravenings, where the hilltops catch the day, to the Phrygian, Lydian mountains, tis Bromios leads the way. Then streams the earth with milk, yea, streams with wine and nectar of the bee, and through the air dim perfume steams of Syrian frankincense. And he, our leader, from his thirst's spray a torchlight tosses high and higher, a torchlight like a beacon fire, to waken all that faint and stray, and sets them leaping as he sings, his tresses rippling to the sky, and deep beneath the main at cry his proud voice rings, Come, O ye Buckeye, come. Hither, O fragrant of Timolus the Golden, come with the voice of timbrel and drum, let the cry of your joyance uplift and embolden the god of the joy cry, O Bacchanals, come, with pealing of pipes and with Phrygian clamour, on, where the vision of holiness thrills, and the music climbs, and the maddening glamour, with the wild white maids to the hills, to the hills. Oh, then, like a colt as he runs by a river, a colt by his dam, when the heart of him sings, with the keen limbs drawn and the fleet foot to quiver, away the bacchanal springs. Enter Tiresias. He is an old man and blind leaning upon a staff and moving with slow stateliness, though wearing the ivy and the bacchic fawn-skin. Ho, there! Who keeps the gate? Go! Summon me Cadmus, Agenor's son, who crossed the sea from Sidon and upreared this Theban hold. Go, whosoe'er thou art, see he be told Tiresias seeketh him. Himself will gauge mine errand and the compact. Age with age I vowed with him, Gray hair with snow-white hair, To deck the new gods Thyrsus, And to wear his fawn skin, And with ivy crown our brows. Enter Cadmus from the castle. He is even older than Tiresias, And wears the same attire. True friend, I knew that voice of thine That flows like mellow wisdom From a fountain wise. And, lo, I come prepared in all the guise and harness of this god. Are we not told his is the soul of that dead life of old that sprang from mine own daughter? Surely, then, must thou and I, with all the strength of men, exalt him. Where, then, shall I stand, where tread the dance, and toss this bowed and hoary head? O oh, friend, in thee is wisdom. Guide my grey and eld-worn steps, eld-worn Tiresias. Nay, I am not weak. At the first movement of worship his manner begins to change. A mysterious strength and exaltation enter into him. Surely this arm could smite the wild earth with its thyrsus, day and night, and faint not. Sweetly and forgetfully the dim years fall from off me. As with thee... With me tis likewise. Light am I and young, and will essay the dancing and the song. Quick, then, our chariots to the mountain road. Nay, to take steeds were to mistrust the god. So be it. Mine old arms shall guide thee there. The god himself shall guide, have thou no care. And in all Thebes shall no man dance but we? Ay. Thebes is blinded. Thou and I can see. Tis weary waiting. Hold my hand, friend, so. Lo, there is mine. So linked, let us go. Shall things of dust the gods' dark ways despise? Or prove our wit on heaven's high mysteries? Not thou and I. That heritage sublime our sires have left us. 
wisdom old as time. No word of man, how deep soe'er his thought, and one of subtlest toil, may bring to naught. I, men will rail, that I forget my years, to dance and wreath with ivy these white hairs. What wrecks it? Seeing the god no line hath told to mark what man shall dance, or young, or old, but craves his honours from mortality, all no man marked apart, and great shall be. Cadmus, after looking away toward the mountain. Tiresias, since this light thou canst not read, I must be seer for thee. Here comes in speed Pentheus, Echion's son, whom I have raised to rule my people in my stead. Amazed he seems. Stand close and mark what we shall hear. The two stand back, partially concealed, while there enters in hot haste Pentheus, followed by a bodyguard. He is speaking to the soldier in command. Scarce said I crossed our borders, when mine ear was caught by this strange rumour that our own wives, our own sisters, from their hearths are flown to wild and secret rites, and cluster there high on the shadowy hills with dance and prayer to adore this new-made god, this Dionysius, whate'er he be. And in their companies deep wine-jars stand, and ever and anon away into the loneliness now one steals forth, and now a second, maid or dame, where love lies waiting, not of God. The flame, they say, of Bacchius wraps them. Bacchius, nay, tis more to Aphrodite that they pray. Howbeit, all that I have found, my men hold bound and shackled in our dungeon den. The rest, I will go hunt them. I and snare my birds with nets of iron, to quell their prayer and mountain song and rites of rascaldom. They tell me, too, there is a stranger come, a man of charm and spell from Lydian seas, a head all gold and cloudy fragrancies, a wine-red cheek, and eyes that hold the light of the very Cyprian. Day and live long night he haunts amid the damsels, o'er each lip dangling his cup of joyance. Let me grip him once, but once within these walls. Right swift that wand shall cease its music, and that drift of tossing curls lie still, when my rude sword falls between neck and trunk. Tis all his word, this tale of Dionysius, how that same babe was blasted by the lightning flame within his dead mother, for that mother's lie was reconceived, born perfect from the thigh of Zeus, and now is God. What call ye these? Dreams? Jibes of the unknown wanderer? Blasphemies that crave the very gibbet? Stay! God what? Here is another marvel. See I not, in motley fawn skins robed, the vision seer Tadesius? And my mother's and father here? O oh, depth of scorn! Adoring with the wand of Bacchius? Father! Nay, mine eyes are fond. It is not your white heads so fancy flown. It cannot be. Cast off that ivy crown, O oh, mine own mother's sire. Set free that hand that cowers about its staff. Tis thou hast planned this work, Tiresias. Tis thou must set another altar, and another yet amongst us, Watch new birds, and win more hire of gold, interpreting new signs of fire. But for thy silver hairs, I tell thee true, thou now wert sitting chained amid thy crew of raving damsels, for this evil dream thou hast brought us of new gods. When once the gleam of grapes hath lit a woman's festival, in all their prayers is no more health at all. Injurious king, hast thou no fear of God? nor Cadmus, sower of the giant's sod, life spring to great Achaion and to thee? Good words, my son, come easily, when he that speaks is wise, and speaks but for the right. Else come they never. Swift are thine, and bright as though with thought, yet have no thought at all, lo, this new god, whom thou dost flout withal. I cannot speak the greatness wherewith he and Hellas shall be great. Two spirits there be, young prince, that in man's world are first of worth. Demeter, one is named, she is the earth, call her which name thou will. 
who feeds man's frame with sustenance of things dry and that which came her work to perfect second is the power from semele born he found the liquid show hid in the grape he rests man's spirit dim from grieving when the vine exalteth him he giveth sleep to sink the fretful day in cool forgetting is there any way with man's sore heart save only to forget yea being god the blood of him is set before the gods in sacrifice that we for his sake may be blessed and so to thee that fable shames him how this god was knit into god's flesh nay learn the truth of it cleared from the false when from that deadly light zeus saved the babe and up to olympus height raised him and hera's wrath would cast him thence then zeus devised him a divine defence a fragment of the world encircling fire he rent apart and wrought to his desire of shape and hue in the image of the child and gave to hera's rage and so beguiled by change and passing time this tale was born how the babe god was hidden in the torn flesh of his sire he hath no shame thereby a prophet is likewise prophecy cleaves to all frenzy but beyond all else to frenzy of prayer then in us verily dwells the god himself and speaks the thing to be yea and of ares realm apart hath he when mortal armies mailed and arrayed have in strange fear or ever blade met blade fled maddened tis this god hath palsied them i over delphi's rock-built diadem thou yet shall see him leaping with his train of fire across the twin-peaked mountain plain flaming the darkness with his mystic wand and in great hellas list and understand king pentheus dream not thou that force is power nor if thou hast a thought and that thought sour and sick o oh, dream not thought is wisdom up receive this god to thebes pour forth the cup of sacrifice and pray and wreath thy brow thou fearest for the damsels think thee now how toucheth this the part of dionys to hold maids pure perforce in them it lies and their own hearts and in the wildest rite cometh no stain to her whose heart is white nay mark me thou hast thy joy when the gate stands thronged and pentheus name is lifted great and high by thebes in clamour shall not he rejoice in his due meed of majesty howbeit this cadmus whom thou scornst and i will wear his crown and tread his dances ay our hairs are white yet shall that dance be trod i will not lift mine arm to war with god for thee nor all thy words madness most fell is on thee madness wrought by some dread spell but not by spell nor leechcraft to be cured grey prophet worthy of phoebus is thy word and wise in honouring bromios our great god my son right well tiresias points thy road o oh, make thine habitation here with us not lonely against men's uses hazardous is this quick bird-like beating of thy thought where no thought dwells grant that this god be not yet let that not be somewhat in thy mouth lie boldly and say he is so north and south shall marvel how there sprang a thing divine from semele's flesh and honour all our line drawing near to pentheus is there not blood before thine eyes even now our lost actaeon's blood whom long ago his own red hounds through yonder forest dim tore unto death because he vaunted him against most holy artemis oh beware and let me wreath thy temples make thy prayer with us and walk thee humbly in god's sight he makes as if to set the wreath on pentheus's head down with that hand aroint thee to thy right nor smear on me thy foul contagion turning upon tiresias this thy folly's head and prompter shall not miss the justice that he needs go half my guard forth to the rock seat where he dwells in ward o'er birds and wonders rend the stone with crown and trident 
make one wreck of high and low, and toss its bands to all the winds of air. Ha! Have I found a way to sting thee there? The rest, forth through the town, and seek amain this girl-faced stranger that hath wrought such bane to all Thebes, preying on our maids and wives. Seek till ye find and lead him here in gyves, till he be judged and stoned, and weep in blood the day he troubled Pentheus with his god. The guards set forth in two bodies. Pentheus goes into the castle. Hard heart! How little dost thou know what seed thou sowest! Blind before, and now indeed most mad! Come, Cadmus, let us go our way, and pray for this our persecutor, pray for this poor city, that the righteous God move not in anger. Take thine ivy rod and help my steps as I help thine. Twere ill if two old men should fall by the roadway. Still, come what may, our service shall be done to Bacchios, the All-Father's mystic son, O Pentheus named of sorrow. Shall he claim from all thy house fulfillment of his name, old Cadmus? Nay, I speak not from mine art, but as I see, blind words and a blind heart. The two old men go off toward the mountain. Thou immaculate on high, thou recording purity, thou that stoopest golden wing, earthward, manward, pitying, hearest thou this angry king, hearest thou the rage and scorn gainst the lord of many voices him of mortal mother born him in whom man's heart rejoices girt with garlands and with glee first in heaven's sovereignty for his kingdom it is there in the dancing and the prayer in the music and the laughter in the vanishing of care and of all before and after in the god's high banquet when gleams the graper flood flashed to heaven Yea, and in the feasts of men comes his crown at slumber, then pain is dead and hate forgiven. Loose thy lips from out the rain, lift thy wisdom to disdain, what so law thou canst not see, scorning, so the end shall be uttermost calamity. Tis the life of quiet breath, tis the simple and the true, storm nor earthquake shattereth, nor shall aught the house undo where they dwell. For far away, hidden from the eyes of day, watchers are there in the skies that can see man's life and prize deeds well done by things of clay. But the world's wise are not wise, claiming more than mortal may. Life is such a little thing. Lo, their present is departed, and the dreams to which they cling come not. Mad imagining theirs, I ween, and empty-hearted. Where is the home for me? O Cyprus, set in the sea, Aphrodite's home in the soft sea foam, would I could wend to thee, where the wings of the loves are furled, and faint the heart of the world. I, unto Paphos' isle, where the rainless meadows smile with riches rolled from the hundredfold, mouths of the far-off Nile, streaming beneath the waves to the roots of the seaward caves, but a better land is there, where Olympus cleaves the air, the high still dell where the muses dwell, fairest of all things fair. Oh, there is grace, and there is the heart's desire, and peace to adore thee, thou spirit of guiding fire. A god of heaven is he, and born in majesty, yet hath he mirth in the joy of the earth, and he loveth constantly her who brings increase, the feeder of children, peace. No grudge hath he of the great, no scorn of the mean estate, but to all that liveth his wine he giveth, griefless, immaculate. Only on them that spurn joy may his anger burn. Love thou the day and the night, be glad of the dark and the light, and avert thine eyes from the lore of the wise that have honour in proud men's sight. The simple, nameless herd of humanity hath deeds and faith that are truth enough for me. As the chorus ceases, a party of the guards return, leading in the midst of them Dionysus, bound. The soldier in command stands forth, as Pentheus, hearing the tramp of feet, comes out from the castle. Our quest is finished, and thy prey, O king, caught. 
for the chase was swift and this wild thing most tame yet never flinched nor thought to flee but held both hands out unresistingly no change no blanching of the wine-red cheek he waited while we came and bade us recall thy decree yea laughed and made my best easy till i for shame confessed and said o oh, stranger not of mine own will i bind thee but his bidding to fulfil who sent me and those prisoned maids withal whom thou didst seize and bind within the wall of thy great dungeon they are fled o king free in the woods a dance and glorying to bromios of their own impulse fell to earth men say fetter and manacle and bars slid back untouched of mortal hand yea full of many wonders to thy land is this man come how be it it lies with thee he are mad and hand him how so swift he be my toils are round him and he shall not fly the guards loose the arms of dionysus pentheus studies him for a while in silence then speaks jeeringly dionysus remains gentle and unafraid marry a fair shape for a woman's eye sir stranger and now thou seek'st no more i ween long curls withal that shows thou never hast been a wrestler down both cheeks so softly tossed and winsome and a white skin it hath cost thee pains to please thy damsel with this white and red of cheek that never faced the light dionysus is silent speak sirrah tell me first thy name and race no glory is therein nor yet disgrace thou hast heard of tumulus the bright hill of flowers surely the ridge that winds by sardis towers thence i am lydia was my fatherland and whence these revelations that thy band spreadeth in hellas their intent and use dionysus oped to me the child of zeus is there a zeus there that can still beget young gods nay only he whose seal was set here in thy thebes on semele what way descended he upon thee in full day or vision of night most clear he stood and scanned my soul and gave his emblems to mine hand what like be they these emblems that may none reveal nor know save his elect alone and what good bring they to the worshipper good beyond price but not for thee to hear thou trickster thou wouldst prick me on the moor to seek them out his mysteries abhor the touch of sin lovers and so thine eye saw this god plain what guise had he what guise it liked him twas not i ordained his shape ay deftly turned again an idle jape and nothing answered wise words being brought to blinded eyes will seem as things of naught and comest thou first to thebes to have thy god established nay ho ho barbary hath trod his dance ere this a low blind folk i ween beside our hellenes higher and more keen in this thing though their ways are not thy way how's thy worship held by night or day most oft by night tis a majestic thing the darkness ha with women worshipping tis craft and rottenness by day no less whoso will seek may find unholiness enough thy doom is fixed for false pretence corrupting thebes not mine but thine for dense blindness of heart and for blaspheming god a ready knave it is and brazen browed this mystery priest come say what it shall be my doom what dire thing wilt thou do to me first shear that delicate curl that dangles there he beckons to the soldiers who approach dionysus i have vowed it to my god tis holy hair the soldiers cut off the tress next yield me up thy staff raise thine own hand to take it this is Dionysus' wand. Pentheus takes the staff. Last, I will hold thee prisoned here. My lord God will unloose me when I speak the word. He may, if e'er again, amid his bands of saints, he hears thy voice. Even now he stands close here and sees all that I suffer. What? Where is he? For mine eyes discern him not. Where I am, tis thine own impurity that veils him from thee. The dog jeers at me, at me and Thebes. Bind him. The soldiers begin to bind him. I charge ye, bind me not. I having vision, and ye blind. And I, with better right, say bind them all. The soldiers obey. 
thou knowest not what end thou seekest nor what deed thou doest nor what man thou art agave's son and on the father's part echion's high pentheus so let it be a name forewritten to calamity away and tie him where the steeds are tied ay let him lie in the manger there bide and stare into the darkness and this rout of womankind that clusters thee about thy ministers of worship are my slaves it may be i will sell them o'er the waves hither and thither or else they shall be set to labour at my distaffs and forget their timbrel and their songs of dawning day i go for that which may not be i may not suffer yet for this sin lo he whom thou deniest cometh after thee for recompense yea in thy wrong to us thou hast cast him into thy prison house dionysus without his wand his hair shorn and his arms tightly bound is led off by the guards to his dungeon pentheus returns into the palace achelous roaming daughter holy dirce virgin water bathed he not of old in thee the babe of god the mystery when from out the fire immortal to himself his god did take him to his own flesh and bespake him enter now life's second portal motherless mystery lo i break mine own body for thy sake thou of the twofold door and seal thee mine o bromios thus he spake and to this thy land reveal thee still my prayer toward thee quivers durcy still to thee i hie me why o blessed among rivers wilt thou fly me and deny me by his own joy i vow by the grape upon the bough thou shalt seek him in the midnight thou shalt love him even now dark and of the dark impassioned is this pentheus blood yea fashioned of the dragon and his birth from echion child of earth he is no man but a wonder did the earth child not beget him as a red giant to set him against god against the thunder he will bind me for his prize me the bride of dionys and my priest my friend is taken even now and buried lies in the dark he lies forsaken lo we race with death we perish dionysus here before thee dost thou mark us not nor cherish who implore thee and adore thee hither down olympus side come o holy one defied be thy golden wand uplifted or the tyrant in his pride o oh, where art thou in thine own nysa thou our help alone or fierce beasts in orient lands doth thy thronging thyrsus wave by the high Corician cave or where stern olympus stands in the elm woods and the oaken there where orpheus harped of old and the trees awoke and knew him and the wild things gathered to him as he sang amid the broken glens his music manifold dionysus loveth thee blessed land of piri he will come to thee with dancing come with joy and mystery with the maenads at his hest winding winding to the west cross the flood of swiftly glancing axios in majesty cross the lydius the giver of good gifts and waving green cross that farther stream of story through a land of steeds and glory rolling bravest fairest river e'er of mortals seen i o i o awake ye damsels hear my cry calling my chosen hearken ye who speaketh oh what echoes thus a voice a voice that calleth us be of good cheer lo it is i the child of zeus and semele oh master master it is thou O oh, holy voice be with us now spirit of the chained earthquake hear my word awake awake an earthquake suddenly shakes the pillars of the castle oh what is coming shall the hall of pentheus racked in ruin fall our god is in the house ye maids adore him we adore him all unveil the lightning's eye arouse the fire that sleeps 
against this house. Fire leaps upon the tomb of Semele. Ah, saw ye, marked ye there the flame from Semele's unhallowed sod awakened. Yea, the death that came ablaze from heaven of old, the same hot splendour of the shaft of God. O oh, cast ye, cast ye to the earth, the Lord cometh against this house. O oh, cast ye down, ye trembling damsels. He, our own adored, God's child hath come, and all is overthrown. The maidens cast themselves upon the ground, their eyes earthward. Dionysus, alone and unbound, enters from the castle. Ye damsels of the morning hills, why lie ye thus dismayed? Ye marked him then, our master, and the mighty hand he laid on tower and rock, shaking the house of Pentheus? But arise, and cast the trembling from your flesh, and lift untroubled eyes. O light in darkness, is it thou? O priest, is this thy face? My heart leaps out to greet thee from the deep of loneliness. Fell ye so quick, despairing, when beneath the gate I passed? Should the gates of Pentheus quell me, or his darkness make me fast? O oh, what was left, if thou wert gone? What could I but despair? How hast thou scaped the man of sin, who freed thee from the snare? I had no pain nor peril. Twas mine own hand set me free. Thine arms were jived. Nay, no gyve, no touch was laid on me. Twas there I mocked him in his gyves, and gave him dreams for food. For when he laid me down, behold, before the stall there stood a bull of offering. And this king, he bit his lips, and straight fell on and bound it, hoof and limb, with grasping wrath and sweat, and I sat watching. Then a voice. And lo, our Lord was come, and the house shook, and a great flame stood o'er his mother's tomb. And Pentheus hied this way and that, and called his thralls amain for water, lest his roof-tree burn, and all toiled, all in vain. Then deemed a sudden I was gone, and left his fire, and sped back to the prison portals, and his lifted sword shone red. But there, methinks, the god had wrought, I speak but as a guess, some dream-shape in mine image, for he smote at emptiness, stabbed in the air, and strove in wrath as though twere me he slew. Then, mid his dreams, God smote him yet again. He overthrew all that high house, and there in wreck for evermore it lies that the day of this my bondage may be sore in Pentheus' eyes. And now his sword is fallen, and he lies outworn and worn, who dared to rise against his god in wrath, being but man. And I uprose and left him, and in all peace took my path, forced to my chosen, wrecking light of Pentheus and his wrath, but soft. Methinks a footstep sounds even now within the hall. Tis he. How think ye he will stand, and what words speak withal? I will endure him gently, though he come in fury hot. For still are the ways of wisdom, and her temper trembleth not. End of part one. Part Two of the Bacchae. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Bacchae by Euripides, translated by Gilbert Murray. Part Two. Enter Pentheus in fury. It is too much. This eastern knave hath slipped his prison, whom I held but now, hard gripped in bondage. Ah, tis he. What, sirrah, how showest thou before my portals? He advances furiously upon him. And set a quiet carriage to thy rage. How comest thou here? 
How didst thou break thy cage? Speak. Said I not, or didst thou mark me not, there was one living that should set me free? Who? Ever wilder are these tales of thine. He who first made for man the clustered vine. I scorn him and his vines. For Dionys, tis well, for in thy scorn his glory lies. Pentheus to his guard. Go swift to all the towers, and bar with all each gate. What, cannot God o'erleap a wall? Oh, wit thou hast, save where thou needest it. Whereso it most imports, there is my wit. Nay, peace. Abide till he who hasteth from the mountainside with news for thee be come. We will not fly, but wait on thy command. Enter suddenly and in haste a messenger from the mountain. Great Pentheus, lord of all this Theban land, I come from high Catheron, where the frore snow spangles gleam and cease not evermore. And what of import may thy coming bring? I have seen the wild white women there, O king, whose fleet limbs darted arrow-like, but now from Thebes away, and come to tell thee how they work strange deeds and passing marvel. Yet I first would learn thy pleasure. Shall I set my whole tale forth, or fail the stranger part? Yea, lord, I fear the swiftness of thy heart, thine edged wrath, and more than royal soul. Thy tale shall nothing scathe thee. Tell the whole. It skills not to be wroth with honesty. Nay, if thy news with them be dark, tis he shall pay it, who bewitched and led them on. A herded kind were moving in the dawn up to the peaks, the greyest, coldest time, when the first rays steal earthward, and the rime yields, when I saw three bands of them. The one Atanoi led, one Aino, one thine own mother Agave, there beneath the trees sleeping they lay like wild things flung at ease in the forest one half sinking on a bed of deep pine greenery one with careless head amid the fallen oak leaves all most cold in purity not as thy tale was told of wine cups and wild music and the chase for love amid the forest's loneliness then rose the queen agave suddenly amid her band and gave the gods wild cry awake ye bacchanals i hear the sound of the horned kine awake ye then all round alert the warm sleep fallen from their eyes a marvel of swift ranks i saw them rise dames young and old and gentle maids unwed among them o'er their shoulders first they shed their tresses and caught up the fallen fold of mantles where some clasp had loosened hold and girt the dappled fawn skins in with long quick snakes that hissed and writhed with quivering tongue and one young fawn held and one wild wolf cub and fed them with white milk and smiled in love young mothers with a mother's breast and babes at home forgotten then they pressed wreathed ivy round their brows and oaken sprays and flowering byrony and one would raise her wand and smite the rock, and a straight jet of quick, bright water came. Another set her thyrsus in the bosomed earth, and there was red wine that the god sent up to her, a darkling fountain. And if any lips sought whiter draughts with dipping fingertips, they pressed the sod, and gushing from the ground came springs of milk. And reed wands, ivy crowned, ran with sweet honey, drop by drop. O oh, king, hadst thou been there as I, and seen this thing with prayer, and most high wonder hadst thou gone to adore this god whom now thou railst upon. Howbeit the kind wardens and shepherds straight came to one place, amazed and held debate. And one being there, who walked the streets and scanned the ways of speech, took lead of them whose hand knew but the slow soil and the solemn hill, and flattering spoke and asked, Is it your will, masters, we stay the mother of the king, Agave, from her lawless worshipping, and win us royal thanks? And this seemed good to all, and through the branching underwood we hid us, cowering in the leaves. And there, through the appointed hour, they made their prayer and worship of the wand, with one accord of heart and cry, Iacos, Bromios, Lord, God of gods, born. And all the mountain felt and worshipped with them. And the wild things knelt and ramped and gloried, and the wilderness was filled with moving voices and dim stress. Soon, as it chanced, beside my thicket close, the queen herself passed dancing, and I rose and sprang to seize her. But she turned her face upon me. Ho! Oh, 
my rovers of the chase, my wild white hounds, we are hunted. Up, each rod and follow, follow for our Lord and God. Thereat, for fear they tear us, we all fled amazed. And on, with hand unweaponed, they swept toward our herd that browsed the green hill grass. Great, uttered kind, then hadst thou seen, bellowing in sword-like hands that cleave and tear, a live steer riven asunder, and the air tossed with rent ribs or limbs of cloven tread, and flesh upon the branches, and a red rain from the deep green pines. Yea, bulls of pride, horns swift to rage, were fronted and aside flung, stumbling by those multitudinous hands, dragged piteously. And swifter were the bands of garbed flesh and bone unbound withal, than on thy royal eyes the lids may fall. Then on like birds, by their own speed upborne, they swept toward the plain of waving corn that lie beside Esopus's banks, and bring to Thebes the rich fruit of her harvesting. On Hisae and Erythrae that lie nursed amid Kitherion's bowering rocks, they burst, destroying as a foeman's army comes. They caught up little children from their homes, high on their shoulders, babes, upheld, that swayed and laughed, and fell not, all a wreck they made. Yea, bronze and iron did shatter, and in play struck hither and thither, yet no wound had they. Caught fire from out the hearths, yea, carried hot flames in their tresses, and were scorched not. The village folk in wrath took spear and sword, and turned upon the baquet. Then, dread lord, the wonder was, for spear nor barbed brand could scathe nor touch the damsels. But the wand, the soft and wreathed wand, their white hands sped, blasted those men and quelled them, and they fled dizzily. Sure some god was in these things, and the holy women, back to those strange springs returned, that god had sent them when the day dawned, on the upper heights, and washed away the stains of battle. And those girdling snakes hissed out to lap the water drops from cheeks and hair and breast. Therefore I counsel thee, O king, receive the spirit, whoe'er he be, to Thebes in glory. Greatness manifold is all about him, and the tale is told that this is he who first to man did give the grief-assuaging vine. O oh, let him live, for if he die, then love herself is slain, and nothing joyous in the world again. Albeit I tremble, and scarce may speak my thought to a king's face, yet will I hide it not. Dionysus is God, no God more true nor higher. It burst hard by us, like a smothered fire, this frenzy of Bacchic women. All my land is made their mock. This needs an iron hand. O oh, captain, quick to the electron gate, bid gather all my men-at-arms thereat, Call all that spur the charger, all that know to wield the orbed targe, or bend the bow. We march to war. For God, shall women dare such deeds against us? Tis too much to bear. Thou mark'st me not, O king, and holdest light my solemn words. Yet in thine own despite I warn thee still, Lift thou not up thy spear against a god, but hold thy peace, and fear his wrath. He will not brook it, if thou fright his chosen from the hills of their delight. Peace thou, and if once thou hast slipped chain, give thanks, or shall I not thine arms again? Better to yield him prayer and sacrifice than kick against the pricks, since Dionysus is god, and thou but mortal. That will I. Yea, sacrifice a woman's blood to cry his name through all Kitheron. Ye shall fly all and abase your shields of bronze and rim before their wands. There is no way with him, this stranger that so dogs us. Well or ill I may entreat him, he must babble still. Wait, good my friend. These crooked matters may even yet be straightened. Pentheus has started as though to seek his army at the gate. I, if I obey my own slave's will, how else? Myself will lead the damsels hither, without sword or steed. How now? This is some plot against me. What dost fear? Only to save thee do I plot. It is some compact ye have made whereby to dance these hills for ever. Verily that is my compact, plighted with my lord. Pentheus turning from him. O oh, armourers! Bring forth my shield and sword, and thou be silent. 
Dionysus, after regarding him fixedly, speaks with resignation. Ah! Uh, have then thy will! He fixes his eyes upon Pentheus again, while the armourers bring out his armour, then speaks in a tone of command. Man, thou wouldst fain behold them on the hill, praying! Pentheus, who, during the rest of this scene, with a few exceptions, simply speaks the thoughts that Dionysus puts into him, losing power over his own mind. That would I, though it cost me all the gold of Thebes. So much? Thou art quick to fall to such great longing. Pentheus, somewhat bewildered at what he has said. Aye, it would grieve me much to see them flown with wine. Yet... Craves thou such a sight as would much grieve thee? Yes, I fain would watch, ambushed among the pines. Twere vain to hide, they soon will track thee out. Well said, twere best done openly. Wilt thou be led by me and try the venture? Aye, indeed. Lead on. Why should we tarry? First, we need a rich and trailing robe of fine linen to gird thee. Nay, am I a woman then, and no man more? Wouldst have them slay thee dead? No man may see their mysteries. Well said. I mark thy subtle temper long ere now. Tis Dionys that prompteth me. And now, meanest thou the further plan? First take thy way within, I will array thee. What array? The woman's? Nay, I will not. Doth it change so soon all thy desire to see this strange adoring? Wait. What garb wilt thou bestow about me? First a long tress, dangling low beneath thy shoulders. Aye, and next? The same red robe falling to thy feet, and on thine head a snood. And after? Hast thou aught beyond? Surely. The dappled fawnskin and the wand. Pentheus, after a struggle with himself. Enough. I cannot wear a robe and snood. How wouldst liefer draw the sword and spill men's blood? True, that were evil. Ay, it is best to go first to some place of watch. Far wiser so than seek by wrath wrath's bitter recompense. What of the city streets? Canst lead me hence unseen of any? Lonely and untried thy path from hence shall be, and I thy guide. I care for nothing, so these bacchanals triumph not against me. Forward to my halls within, I will ordain what seemeth best. Ah, so be it, O king. Tis mine to obey thine hest, whate'er it be. Pentheus, after hesitating once more, and waiting. Well, I will go. Perchance to march and scatter them with serried lance. Perchance to take thy plan. I know not yet. Exit Pentheus into the castle. Damsels, the lion walketh to the net. He finds his Bacchae now, and sees, and dies, and pays for all his sin. O oh, Dionys, this is thine hour, and thou not far away. Grant us our vengeance. First, O oh master, stay the course of reason in him, and instil a foam of madness. Let his seeing will, which ne'er had stopped to put thy vesture on, be darkened, till the deed is lightly done. Grant likewise that he find through all his streets loud scorn this man of wrath and bitter threats that made Thebes tremble, led in woman's guise. I go to fold that robe of sacrifice on Pentheus that shall deck him to the dark, his mother's gift. So shall he learn and mark God's true son, Dionys, in fullness, God, most fearful yet to man, most soft of mood. Exit Dionysus, following Pentheus into the castle. Will they ever come to me, ever again, the long, long dances, on through the dark till the dim stars wane? Shall I feel the dew on my throat? and the stream of wind in my hair. Shall our white feet gleam in the dim expanses? O oh, feet of a fawn to the green wood fled, alone in the grass and the loveliness! Leap of the hunted, no more in dread, beyond the snares and the deadly press! Yet a voice still in the distance sounds, 
a voice and a fear and a haste of hounds, a wildly labouring, fiercely fleet, onward yet by river and glen, is it joy or terror, ye storm-swift feet, to the dear lone lands untroubled of men, where no voice sounds, and amid the shadowy green the little things of the woodland live unseen. What else is wisdom? What of man's endeavour or God's high grace so lovely and so great? To stand from fear set free, to breathe and wait, to hold a hand uplifted over hate, and shall not loveliness be loved for ever? O strength of God, slow art thou and still, yet failest never. On them that worship the ruthless will, on them that dream doth his judgment wait. Dreams of the proud man making great and greater ever things which are not of God. In wide and devious coverts, hunter-wise, he coucheth time's unhasting stride, following, following him whose eyes look not to heaven. For all is vain, the pulse of the heart, the plot of the brain, that striveth beyond the laws that live. And is thy fate so much to give? Is it so hard a thing to see, that the Spirit of God, whate'er it be, the law that abides and changes not, ages long, the eternal and nature born, these things be strong? What else is wisdom? What of man's endeavour or God's high grace so lovely and so great? To stand from fear set free, to breathe and wait, to hold a hand uplifted over hate, and shall not loveliness be loved for ever? Happy he, on the weary sea, who hath fled the tempest and won the haven. Happy whoso hath risen, free, above his striving. For strangely graven is the orb of life, that one and another in gold and power may outpass his brother, and men in their millions float and flow and see with a million hopes as leaven, and they win their will, or miss their will and the hopes are dead, or are pined for still. But who e'er can know, as the long days go, that to live is happy, hath found his heaven. Re-enter Dionysus from the castle. O, oh, I that cravest sights thou must not see! O, oh, heart athirst for that which slakes not! Thee, Pentheus, I call, forth and be seen in guise of woman! Menad, saint of Dionys, to spy upon his chosen and thine own mother. Enter Pentheus, clad like a bacchanal, and strangely excited, a spirit of bacchic madness overshadowing him. Ah, thy shape, methinks, is like to one of Cadmus' royal maids. Yea, and mine eye is bright. Yon sun shines twofold in the sky, Thebes twofold, and the wall of seven gates. And is it a wild bull this? that walks and waits before me? There are horns upon thy brow. What art thou, man or beast? For surely now the bull is on thee. He who erst was wroth goes with us now in gentleness. He hath unsealed thine eyes to see what thou shouldst see. Say, stand I not as Eno stands, or she who bore me? When I look on thee, it seems I see their very selves. But stay. Why streams that lock abroad not where I laid it, crossed under the coif? I did it as I tossed my head in dancing, to and fro, and cried his holy music. Dionysus, tending him. It shall soon be tied aright. Tis mine to tend thee. Nay, but stand with head straight. In the hollow of thine hand I lay me. Deck me as thou wilt. <laughs> thy zone is loosened likewise. And the folded gown not evenly falling to the feet? Tis so, by the right foot. But hear me thinks they flow in one straight line to the heel. And if thou prove their madness true, I am more than true, what love and thanks hast thou for me? In my right hand is it, or thus, that I should bear the wand to be most like to them? Up let it swing in thy right hand, timed with the right foot's spring. Tis well thy heart is changed. What strength is this, Kithron steeps, and all that in them is? How sayest thou, could my shoulders lift the whole? Surely thou canst, and if thou wilt. Thy soul, being once so sick, now stands as it should stand. Shall it be bars of iron, 
or the spare hand and shoulder to the crags to wrench them down. Wouldst wreck the nymph's wild temples and the brown rocks where Pan pipes at noonday? Nay, not I. Force is not well with women. I will lie hid in the pine brake. Even as fits a spy on holy and fearful things, so shalt thou lie. Ha, 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 ha. They lie there now, methinks, the wild birds caught by love among the leaves and fluttering not. It may be. That is what thou goest to see. I am to trap them. So they trap not thee. Forth through the Thebans' town, I am their king, I their one man, seeing I dare this thing. Yea, thou shalt bear their burden, thou alone, therefore thy trial awaiteth thee. But on, with me into thine ambush shalt thou come unscathed, then let another bear thee home. The queen, my mother. Marked of every eye. For that I go. Thou shalt be born on high. That were like pride. Thy mother's hands shall share thy carrying. Nay, I need not such soft care. So soft? Whatever it be, I have earned it well. Exit Pentheus towards the mountain. Fell, fell art thou, and to a doom so fell thou walkest, that thy name from south to north shall shine, a sign for ever. Reach thou forth thine arms, Agave, now, and ye dark-browed Cadman sisters, greet this prince so proud to the high ordeal, where save God and me none walks unscathed. The rest this day shall see. Exit Dionysus, following Pentheus. O hounds, raging and blind, up by the mountain road, sprites of the maddened mind, to the wild maids of God, fill with your rage their eyes, rage at the rage unblessed, watching in woman's guise the spy upon gods possessed. Who shall be first, to mark eyes in the rock that spy, eyes in the pine tree dark? Is it his mother? and cry, Lo, what is this that comes, haunting, troubling still, even in our heights, our homes, the wild maids of the hill? What flesh bear this child? Never on woman's breast changeling so evil smiled. Man is he not but beast, loin shape of the wild, gorgon breed of the waste. Hither, for doom and deed, Hither, with lifted sword, justice, wrath of the Lord, come in our visible need. Smite till the throat shall bleed, smite till the heart shall bleed, him the tyrannous, lawless, godless, Achaean's earth-born seed. Tyrannously hath he trod, marched him in law's despite, against thy light, O God, yea, and thy mother's light. Girded him, falsely bold, blinded in craft to quell, and by man's violence hold things unconquerable. A straight, pitiless mind is death unto godliness, and to feel in humankind life and a pain the less. Knowledge, we are not foes, I seek thee diligently, that the world with a great wind blows, shining and not from thee blowing to beautiful things, on, amid dark and light, till life, through the trammelings of laws that are not the right, breaks, clean and pure, and sings glorying to God in the height. Hither for doom and deed, hither with lifted sword, justice, wrath of the Lord, come in our visible need, smite till the throat shall bleed, smite till the heart shall bleed, him the tyrannous, lawless, godless Achaean's earth-born seed. Appear, appear whatso thy shape or name, O mountain bull, snake of the hundred heads, lion of burning flame, O God, beast, mystery come! Thy mystic maids are hunted, blast their hunter with thy breath, cast o'er his head thy snare, and laugh aloud and drag him to his death, who stalks thy herded madness in its lair. Enter hastily a messenger from the mountain, pale and distraught. Woe to the house once blessed in Hellas! Woe to thee, old King Sidonian, who didst sow the dragon seed on Ares' bloody lee! Alas, even thy slaves must weep for thee! News from the mountain. Speak, 
how hath it sped pentheus my king echion's son is dead all hail god of the voice manifest evermore what sayest thou and how strange thy tone as though in joy at this my master's overthrow with fierce joy i rejoice child of a savage shore for the chains of my prison are broken and the dread where i cowered of yore and deem'st thou thebes so beggared so forlorn of manhood as to sit beneath thy scorn thebes hath o'er me no sway none save him i obey dionysus child of the highest him i obey and adore one can forgive thee yet tis no fair thing maids to rejoice in a man's suffering speak of the mountain side tell us the doom he died the sinner smitten to death even where his sin was sore we climbed beyond the utmost habitings of theban shepherds past aesopus's springs and struck into the land of rock on dim Catheron, pentheus and attending him i and the stranger who should guide our way then first in a green dell we stopped and lay lips dumb and feet unmoving warily watching to be unseen and yet to see a narrow glen it was by crags or towered torn through the by tossing waters and there lowered a shadow of great pines over it and there the mated maidens sate in toil they were busily glad some with an ivy chain tricked a worn wand to toss its locks again some wild in joyance like young steeds set free made answering songs of mystic melody but my poor master saw not the great band before him stranger he cried where we stand my eyes can reach not these false saints of thine mount we the banks or some high-shouldered pine and i shall see their follies clear at that there came a marvel for the stranger straight touched a great pine tree's high and heavenward crown and lower 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 urged it down to the herbless floor round like a bending bow or slow wheels rim a joiner forces to so in those hands that tough and mountain stem bowed slow oh strength not mortal dwelt in them to the very earth and there he set the king and slowly lest it cast him in that spring let back the young and straining tree till high it towered again amid the towering sky and pentheus in its branches well i ween he saw the maidens then and well was seen for scarce was he aloft when suddenly there was no stranger any more with thee but out of heaven a voice oh what voice else twas he that called behold o damosels i bring ye him who turneth to despite both me and ye and darkeneth my great light tis yours to avenge so spake he and there came twixt earth and sky a pillar of high flame and silence took the air and no leaf stirred in all the forest dell thou hadst not heard in that vast silence any wild things cry and up they sprang but with bewildered eye a gaze and listening scarce yet hearing true then came the voice again and when they knew their god's clear will old cadmus's royal brood up like wild pigeons startled in a wood on flying feet they came his mother blind agave and her sisters and behind all the wild crowd more deeply maddened then through the angry rocks and torrent tossed glen until they spied him in the dark pine tree then climbed a crag hard by and furiously some sought to stone him some their wands would fling lancewise aloft in cruel targeting but none could strike the height o'ertopped their rage and there he clung unscathed as in a cage caught and of all their strife no end was found then hither cried agave stand we round and grip the stem my wild ones till we take this climbing cat of the mount he shall not make a tale of god's high dances out then shone arm upon arm past count and closed upon the pine and gripped and the ground gave and down it reeled and that high sitter from the crown of the green pine top with a shrieking cry fell as his mind grew clear and there hard by was horror visible twas his mother stood o'er him first priestess of those rites of blood he tore the coif and from his head away flung it that she might know him 
and not slay to her own misery. He touched the wild cheek, crying, Mother, it is I, thy child, thy Pentheus, born thee in Echion's hall. Have mercy, mother, let it not befall through the sin of mine that thou shouldst slay thy son. But she, with lips of foam and eyes that run like leaping fires, with thoughts that ne'er should be on earth, possessed by Bacchios utterly, stays not her hears. Round his left arm she puts both hands, set hard against his side her foot, drew, and the shoulder severed. Not by might of arm, but easily, as the god made light her hand to say. And at the other side was Eno rendering, and torn flesh cried, and, and Otonoe pressed, and all the crowd of ravening arms. Yea, all the air was loud with groans that faded into sobbing breath dim shrieks, and joy, and triumph cries of death. And here was born a severed arm, and there a hunter's booted foot, white bones lay bare with rending, and swift hands as sanguined, tossed as in sport the flesh of Pentheus dead. His body lies afar, the precipice hath part, and parts in many an interstice lurk of the tangled woodlands, no light quest to find. And, ah, the head! Of all the rest, his mother hath it, pierced upon a wand, as one might pierce a lion's, and through the land, leaving her sisters in their dancing place, bears it on high. Yea, to these walls her face was set, exulting in her deed of blood, calling upon her Bromios, her god, her comrade, fellow renderer of the prey, her all victorious, to whom this day she bears in triumph her own broken heart. For me? After that sight, I will depart before Agave comes. Oh, to fulfill God's law, and have no thought beyond his will, is man's best treasure. I, and wisdom true, methinks, for things of dust to cleave unto. The messenger departs into the castle. Weave ye the dance, and call praise to God. Bless ye the tyrant's fall. Down is trod, Pentheus, the dragon's seed. Wore he the woman's weed, clasped he his death indeed, clasped the rod. Yea, the wild ivy lapped him, and the doomed wild bull of sacrifice before him loomed. Ye who did Bromeo scorn, praise him the more, Bacchanals, Cadmus born, praise with sore agony, yea, with tears, great are the gifts he bears, hands that a mother rears red with gore. But stay, Agave cometh, and her eyes make fire around her, reeling. Ho, oh, the prize cometh. All hail, O rout of Dionys. Enter from the mountain Agave, mad, and to all seeming wondrously happy, bearing the head of Pentheus in her hand. The chorus maidens stand horror-struck at the sight. The leader, also horror-struck, strives to accept it and rejoice in it as the god's deed. Ye from the lands of morn, call me not, I give praise. Lo, from the trunk new shorn, hither a mountain thorn, bear we, O Asia born Bacchanals, bless this chase. I see, yea, I see, have I not welcomed thee? He was young, in the wild wood without nets, I caught him, nay. Look without fear on the lion, I have ta'en him. Where in the wildwood, whence have ye brought him? Scytherin. Cytheron. The mountain hath slain him. Who first came nigh him? I, I, tis confessed, and they named me there, by him, Agave the Blessed. Who was next in the band on him? The daughters. The daughters? Of Cadmus laid hand on him, but the swift hand that slaughters is mine. Mine is the praise. Bless ye this day of days. The leader tries to speak, but is not able. Agave begins gently stroking the head. Gather ye now to the feast. Feast! O oh, miserable! See, it falls to his breast, curling and gently tressed. The hair of the wild bull's crest, the young steer of the fell. 
most like a beast of the wild that head those locks defiled agave lifting up the head more excitedly he wakened his mad ones a chase god a wise god he sprang them to seize this he prays where his band prays in the trail of thy mad ones thou tearest thy prize god dost praise it i praise this ah uh, soon shall the land praise and pentheus o mother thy child he shall cry on my name as none other bless the spoils of the lion ay strange is thy treasure and strange was the taking thou art glad beyond measure yeah glad in the breaking of dawn upon all this land by the prize the prize of my hand show them to all the land unhappy one the trophy of this deed that thou hast done oh all ye men that round the citadel and shining towers of ancient thebe dwell come look upon this prize this lion's spoil that we have taken ya with our own toil we cadmus's daughters not with lathern set thessalian javelins not with hunter's net only white arms and swift hands bladed fall why make ye much ado and boast withal your armourers engines see these palms were bare that caught the angry beast and beheld and tear the limbs of him father go bring to me my father ay and pentheus where is he my son he shall set up a ladder stair against this house and in the triglyphs there nail me this lion's head that gloriously i bring ye having slain him i even i she goes through the crowd toward the castle showing the head and looking for a place to hang it enter from the mountain cadmus with attendants bearing the body of pentheus on a bier on with your awful burden follow me thralls to his house whose body grievously with many a weary search at last in dim Kitheron's glens i found torn limb from limb and through the intervening forest weed scattered men told me of my daughter's deed when i was just returned within these walls with great tiresias from the bacchanals and back i hied me to the hills again to seek my murdered son there saw i plain actaeon's mother ranging where he died autonoe and eno by her side wandering ghastly in the pine copses agave was not there the rumour is she cometh fleetfoot hither ah tis true a sight i scarce can bend mine eyes unto agave turning from the palace and seeing him my father a great boast is thine this hour thou hast begotten daughters high in power and valiant above all mankind yea all valiant though none like me i have let fall the shuttle by the loom to slay from out thy land wild beasts see in my arms i bear the prize that nailed above these portals it may rise to show what things thy daughters did do thou take it and call a feast proud art thou now and highly favoured in our valiancy o oh, depth of grief how can i fathom thee or look upon thee poor poor blood-stained hand poor sisters a fair sacrifice to stand before god's altars daughter yea and call me and my citizens to feast withal nay let me weep for thine affliction most then for mine own all all of us are lost not wrongfully yet it is hard from one who might have loved our bromios our own how crabbed and how scolding in his eyes is man's old age would that my son likewise were happy of his hunting in my way when with his warrior bands he will essay the wild beast 
Nigh, his valiance is to fight with God's will. Father, thou shouldst set him right. Will no one bring him thither, that mine eyes may look on his and show him this my prize? Alas, if ever ye can know again the truth of what ye did, what pain of pain that truth shall bring, or were it best to wait darkened for evermore, and deem your state not misery, though ye know no happiness? What seest thou here to chide, or not to bless? Raise me thine eyes to yon blue dome of air. Tis gone. What dost thou bid me seek for there? Is it the same, or change it in thy sight? More shining than before, more heavenly bright. And that wild tremor, is it with thee still? I know not what thou sayest, but my will clears, and some change cometh, I know not how. Canst hearken then, being changed, and answer now? I have forgotten something, else I could. What husband led thee of old from mine abode? Echion, whom men named the child of earth. And what child in Echion's house had birth? Pentheus, of my love and his father's bread. Thou bearest in thine arms an head. What head? Agave, beginning to tremble and not looking at what she carries. A lion's. So they all said in the chase, Turn to it now, tis no long toil, and gaze. Ah, but what is it? What am I carrying here? Look once upon it full, till all be clear. I see most deadly pain. Oh, woe is me. Where's it the likeness of a lion to thee? No. Tis the head, O oh God, of Pentheus, this blood-drenched ere thou wouldst know him ay tis his who slew him how came i to hold this thing o oh, cruel truth is this thine homecoming answer my heart is hanging on thy breath twas thou thou and thy sisters wrought his death in what place was it his own house or where where the dogs tore Actaeon, even there why went he to Scytherin? What sought he? To mock the god in thine own ecstasy. But how should we be on the hills this day? Being mad, a spirit drove all the land that way. Tis Dionys hath done it, now I see. Ye wronged him, ye denied his deity. Show me the body of the son I love. Tis here, my child, hard was the quest thereof. Laid in due state. As there is no answer, she lifts the veil of the bier and sees. Oh, if I wrought a sin, twas mine. What portion had my child therein? He made him like to you, adoring not the God, who therefore to one bane hath brought you and this body, wrecking all our line and me. I, no man-child was ever mine, and now this first fruit of the flesh of thee, sad woman, foully here and frightfully lies murdered, whom the house looked up unto. Kneeling by the body. O child, my daughter's child, who heldest true my castle walls, and to the folk a name of fear thou wast, and no man sought to shame my grey beard when they knew that thou wast there, else had they swift reward. And now I fare forth in dishonour, outcast I, the great Cadmus, who sowed the seed-rows of this state of Thebes, and reaped the harvest wonderful. O oh, my beloved, though thy heart is dull in death, O oh, still beloved, and alway beloved, never more then shalt thou lay thine hand to this white beard, and speak to me, thy mother's father, ask who wrongeth thee, who stints thine honour, or with malice stirs thine heart, speak and I smite thine injurers. But now, woe, woe to me and thee also, 
woe to thy mother and her sisters woe alway oh whoso walketh not in dread of gods let him but look on this man dead lo i weep with thee twas but due reward god sent on pentheus but for thee tis hard my father thou canst see the change in me a page or more has here been torn out of the manuscript from which all our copies of the bacchae are derived it evidently contained a speech of agave followed presumably by some words of the chorus and an appearance of dionysus upon a cloud he must have pronounced judgment upon the thebans in general and especially upon the daughters of cadmus have justified his own action and declared his determination to establish his godhead where the manuscript begins again we find him addressing cadmus and tell of time what gifts for thee he bears what griefs and wonders in the winding years for thou must change and be a serpent thing strange and beside thee she whom thou didst bring of old to be thy bride from heaven afar harmonia daughter of the lord of war yea and a chariot of kine so spake the word of zeus thee and thy queen shall take through many lands lord of a wild array of orient spears and many towns shall they destroy beneath thee that vast horde until they touch apollo's dwelling and fulfil their doom back driven on stormy ways and steep thee only and thy spouse shall ares keep and save alive to the islands of the blest thus speaketh dionysus son confessed of no man but of zeus ah had ye seen truth in the hour ye would not all had been well with ye and the child of god your friend dionysus we beseech thee we have sinned too late when there was time ye knew me not we have confessed yet is thine hand too hot ye mocked me being god this is your wage should god be like a proud man in his rage tis as my sire zeus willed it long ago old man the word is spoken we must go and seeing ye must what is it that ye wait child we are come into a deadly strait all thou poor sufferer and thy sisters twain and my sad self far off to barbarous men a gray-haired wanderer i must take my road and then the oracle the doom of god that i must lead a raging horde far flown to prey on hellas lead my spouse mine own harmonia ares child discorporate and haunting forms dragon and dragon mate against the tombs and altar-stones of greece lance upon lance behind us and not cease from toils like other men nor dream nor past the foam of acheron find my peace at last father and i must wander far from thee o oh, child why wilt thou reach thine arms to me as yearns the milk-white swan when old swans die where shall i turn me else no home have i i know not i can help thee not farewell o oh homo ancient tower lo i am outcast from my bower and leave ye for a worser lot go forth go forth to misery the way actaeon's father went father for thee my tears are spent nay child tis i must weep for thee for thee and for thy sisters twain on all this house in bitter wise our lord and master dionys hath poured the utter dregs of pain in bitter wise for bitter was the shame ye did me when thebes honoured not my name then lead me where my sisters be together let our tears be shed our ways be wandered where no red cithern waits to gaze on me nor i gaze back no thyrsus stem nor song nor memory in the air 
Oh, other bacchanals be there. Not I, not I, to dream of them. Agave, with her group of attendants, goes out on the side away from the mountain. Dionysus rises upon the cloud and disappears. There may be many shapes of mystery, and many things God makes to be, past hope or fear. And in the end men looked for cometh not, and a path is there where no man thought. So hath it fallen here. Exeunt. End of Part 2 End of the Bacchae by Euripides Translated by Gilbert Murray